Toyota time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today we have another video for you on my 85 Toyota 4Runner Bro Dozer. If you've been following along with our most recent videos, you saw that I got my front drive shaft repaired at a local shop to me called South Bay Driveline in San Jose, California. I noticed that the splines had a lot of play in it and I also noticed the front U-joint was wasted. So knowing that I can't really do anything about the splines, I took it to them and they rebuilt it for me with a heavy duty trail gear, slip and yoke assembly, and I'm pretty happy with it. As part of my general maintenance on this truck, greasing zerk fittings and changing all the fluids, I did come across another problem with my rear drive shaft. Those of you that are familiar with doing general maintenance on these rigs, the rear slip yoke has a plug at the end of it. And so when you pump it with grease, that plug is keeping the grease in place inside the yoke and won't let it come out the back end. It's also to help keep contaminants out of that slip yoke. I did make the mistake that a lot of people get away with and that I've gotten away with even on my third gen 4Runner is I over pumped that slip yoke with grease because I was lazy and I didn't want to do what I believe is the right way to do it is removing the slip yoke, manually greasing the female and male splines and putting it back together. Because like I show in the very first couple videos we made for this channel, the Timmy the Tool Man Show, I discuss that I think that the Zerk fitting for the slip yoke is a very poor design to get those splines lubricated properly. If you click on the link above, you'll see links to those videos and you'll see how I disconnected the drive shaft, separated the slip yoke from the main drive shaft, manually greased it and then put it all back together. But like I said, I didn't bother with that this time. I decided, well, I'll just pump a bunch of grease in there and when the suspension cycles and compresses, it's going to force some grease up into the upper splines. Well, what ended up happening is that all that extra pressure that's built up with it overpacked with grease, it jettisoned that plug out the back end and now I don't have a plug there anymore. So now there's nothing to hold the grease in and there's nothing to keep major contaminants getting in there. Say if you went four wheeling and you went through some puddles, you're going to be getting all kinds of grime and dirt and grit in that joint, which isn't good. At first I thought maybe I can get a, some type of plug in there and I have some different types of plugs actually from like bicycle applications, but nothing would fit. And so then I said, well, I'm just gonna talk to the guys at South Bay Driveline and see what they have to say. There was some discussion that you could maybe remove the U-joint and then get another plug put in and then weld it in, but Steve, the owner said, that sometimes works, but quite often doesn't work and the thing will end up coming out again. He said the best bet is to get another yoke assembly, rebalance the drive shaft and call it good. So I took his advice because this guy's been in the business for a lot of years, 30 plus years. I know he knows what he's talking about and when you talk to somebody, you can pretty much figure out, hey, are they blowing smoke up you know what? Or are they giving you the straight answer? And I believe when Steve tells me that it's better to just go with a new yoke than to try some other type of janky method and then it doesn't work. And you've wasted time and you've wasted money. So now let me show you the original yoke where that plug is supposed to be. Okay, here's my original slip yoke. This is the rear U-joint. And this is the flange that attaches to the third member and you go down and you can see that there's a hole there and there's supposed to be a plug there and it's gone. Right here you see the Zerk fitting that greases the slip yoke and you can see how this would do a really poor job of lubricating the splines because basically the grease is going in the very bottom of the slip yoke but with the grease mainly in the bottom of the slip yoke and you have all these splines 
to lubricate. You can see how long it is. You can see how this Zerk fitting does a pretty darn poor job of lubricating the male and female splines of this yoke assembly. So like I stated, some guys will try to get some type of plug in here, maybe like an engine freeze plug and force it in there. Can they effectively force it in there without removing the U-joint? I don't know. One thing to note about this original design from Toyota is that this plug doesn't have any type of weep hole to let pressure out. So if you've ever taken one of these slip yokes off the main drive shaft and then you go to put it back on after you greased it, you'll notice that it's really hard to get on. So a trick is to remove this Zerk fitting for the slip yoke to allow the pressure somewhere to go. And then once you get the slip yoke on, then you reattach your Zerk fitting. What I like about the replacement yoke that Steve put on for me, it's made by Powertrain Industries, is that it has a little weep hole in the middle of it to where it will let excessive pressure release and not put undue pressure on the plug if you happen to overfill it with grease or just from the suspension cycling, it puts pressure and knocks it out. So now let me show you what the Powertrain Industries yoke that Steve put on for me looks like. Here's the U-joint and the flange that attaches to the third member. And then if I rotate this out of the way a little bit, you can see the plug right here. And right here in the middle is a tiny little hole that allows excessive grease and pressure to escape. This is a really nice design that I kind of wish Toyota put in with their design. Because even if you did over grease the joint, this is allowing the excessive grease and pressure to escape. Whereas the Toyota one is just going to hold all that pressure in. And if the plug isn't in there very well, you're going to basically force it out and then now you're not going to have anything keeping the grease in and you won't have protection from contaminants getting into the joint. Here's the whole drive shaft. This is the double carton joint that attaches to the transfer case. Then you got your main propeller shaft and then you have the slip yoke that slides in. And the reason for this is that when the suspension is cycling, if this drive shaft was fixed without the ability to contract and expand, it wouldn't work well because the suspension moves and the whole drivetrain moves on flexible mounts, the engine mounts and the transmission mount. So there has to be some give here. So that's the purpose of it being able to slide in and out. So you'll notice, you'll see these little discs welded on to the shaft. And this whole shaft, main drive shaft, and the yoke are balanced as a unit. There's one weight there. If I rotate the drive shaft, you'll see another one right there. So they needed to put two weights on this to get the whole drive shaft properly balanced. Sometimes you'll see a weight on the slip yoke as well, but I guess it just depends how either the factory or another driveline shop decided to do it. My weights are both on the main drive shaft. On the subject of balancing, if you did decide to follow my lead and remove this yoke from the main drive shaft in order to grease it, you'll want to make match marks because the whole unit is balanced together. And so if you don't get this rear slip yoke in the exact same position, you're going to throw your drive shaft out of balance. And then you have the potential of getting some gnarly vibrations. And then you're going to have to do some guesswork on getting it back in the right spot to rebalance it. Or you're going to have to take it back to a driveline shop and have them rebalance it for you. So make sure if you're going to remove this yoke from the main drive shaft to make match marks so you can get it back in the original position. Since we're talking about drive shafts in this video, I figured I talk more about this double carton joint that Toyota makes. Toyota does not sell replacement U joints for this double carton joint. And that presents a problem because the available manufacturers that do make replacement U joints for these double carton joints, and there's also a center ball in the middle, the quality of those replacement U-joints and center ball are suspect. 
I talked about this in detail with Steve Johnson, the owner of South Bay Driveline, and he is of the opinion that this double card and joint isn't worth rebuilding because the parts that you can get for them are not that great. What he tells me is that if there's a problem with the double card and joint, they just suggest the person get another whole drive shaft built by them and then they know that the thing's gonna last a long time. It makes sense to me that a guy that's been in the driveline business for over 30 years is not gonna rebuild a drive shaft knowing that there's a high chance that the parts he used are gonna fail in a short amount of time. So it makes sense that the guy is not gonna run the risk using inferior parts to rebuild a double card and joint just to have it fail down the road on the customer and then they're coming back and they're not happy. So it makes total sense that what he's telling me is the absolute truth and rebuilding these double card and joints is kind of a crapshoot and probably not worth your time and money. Just get another drive shaft built for yourself. All right, that's pretty much everything I wanted to let you know about this subject. I thought it was important to share with you what happened to my rear drive shaft and my choice of having to fix the issue in case you run into the same problem. With drive shaft issues, you obviously have choices. You can do like I did and find a good local driveline shop in your area and let them do the work for you. Or you can use one of the online manufacturers of aftermarket drive lines and go that route too. It's personal preference. I like the fact that I can go right down there to a brick and mortar place, talk to a guy that's been in the business for 30 plus years, knows what he's talking about, gives good advice, and is not gonna lead you astray. Are you gonna get the same thing online? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But when you get work done locally, if you have any issues, guess what? You get to just get in your rig and drive down there and show them the problem and they can get it turned around and fixed for you if you have any issues. The work that South Bay Driveline did for me, they turned it around in one day. Are you gonna get that kind of service online? No, you have to wait for shipping to there, have them do the work and, and ship it back. So if you are in a rush to get your rig back on the road, going local is a pretty smart move. You might pay a little more, maybe it's more affordable, who knows? But there is something to be said about the convenience of going to a local shop and getting the work done quickly for you and done right. With all that said, thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye bye, sick mods, sick first gen forerunners, and happy wrenching do-it-yourselfers. Bye bye.